Can you please tell the camera the stationary astronauts got me? Yo, stationary astronauts fucking figured it out. I don't know how, with the fucking haircut and everything, but he fucking did it. He did it. Yo, dick! <laughs> Alright. Uh, hey Gary, we're, we're good to go, baby. We're good to go. You got a, you got a mic right I there. Got a mic. Awesome. Mr. Vannerchuk. Yes, sir. I am so appreciative. Um, if I, dude, I signed the dotted line with nothing. Yes. And um, through grit and will, um, I'm what was gonna, the what was the big first domino that fell? The big first domino was um, Zach Nadler getting back to me a day early. So, Interesting. Yeah. So everyone was on Christmas break. Mm -hmm. he, uh, I got the automated email back mm -hmm. saying that they were going to get back to me on Ju January third. Yes. He got back to me on January 2nd, and I had already hit him with, because we have a cool thing going on here, we have we double yep. in population on yep. a monthly basis due yep. to visitors alone, and he liked this story, and I don't know if any of this was getting relayed to you, No. Um, but then it just came down to, man, my pitch game was on point, and I um, really- Yeah, because he's a tough filter, because we've got a thousand people a month that don't have the economics. Mm -hmm. That are like pitch it. We like we don't like we don't lock up dates like mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm. And you also had to give a deposit at some point, bro. The deposit was the toughest part. It had to be. Um. So like he actually dropped it in half for me. Good for, man, um, Zach. Big shout out to you, Nadler. Like straight up. Dog. Wow. Like he honestly, Nadler made it happen because he doesn't. He must have really believed in you. He 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 did, and I um I like it was just so crazy because I knew I was irking him. I mm -hmm. knew I was pissing him off. He's mm -hmm. like he's a New York state of mind. No games, dog, and like hundred percent. Unfortunately, like money doesn't grow on trees here in the I Midwest. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And like, so what was the first domino after that? Um, it was Kathleen Harrington, the president of the Chamber of Commerce, believed in me. Love it. And she um I got a sit down, dude, out of fate. I got a sit down. And um, she just like cut me an initial check, and it was nothing big. It was just a five thousand dollar check. That's but big, it though. got my it got my social. It gave me you leverage. Yeah, bro, it gave me leverage. And then um, uh, my boy Marcus Sherrills, who's our punt returner for the Minnesota Vikings, he's like, you know what, man, I got you, dog. I got you. And he uh, cut me that that deposit check, and I'm blind faith. Wow. Um, Good. And but he was my point guard. He, we graduated together. You just met his brother and sister in law mm -hmm. in the in the meet and greet and. Um, that was the first domino dog because then that got Nadler off my back. But this is the crazy thing: is after I cut the the um, turned deposit. over the first deposit, it was only twenty five percent. So we did it on blind faith. Immediately DJ is hitting me up like, "Yo, you got the rest of that deposit?" And I was like, "Oh shit, dog!" And they just kept giving me more time, more time. Wow! Because they believed in it. I didn't know any of this stuff. Dude. I told Nadler nobody. Only take 50% deposits and don't fuck around on impact. I don't need you closing my schedule for mm -hmm, a day mm -hmm. and then coming back and being like, it's not going to happen. Yeah. Well, listen, he he clearly saw something mm -hmm. in you and he was right. I'm telling you, Gary. Pretty eyes and a fucked up haircut. Yeah, dude. I'm telling you, no. I got to get rid of this thing, dog. No, dude, it's I'm awesome. I'm joking. I, w I wish I had that hair. <laughs> Go ahead. Right, Caleb? Uh, no, but, okay, so we were just moving and then the hustle just kept going and, um, as the momentum started picking up, these um, powers that be, these these heads started believing in me because they started catching wind. Like I don't know who Gary is, but this motherfucker Nick's got some energy to him, mm -hmm. and he's really hustling. Like he's I sacrificed my job with Reebok, like all my other jobs, dog. I had a baby throughout this process. Jesus. I have a four month old daughter. Congrats, like dog, like my hustle is on a one right now. I get it. You know, and like and now it's real and it's here. Yes. Is it emotional for it to be real? It is because um, when it's in your head. And it's just an imagination to like actually see it in real life mm -hmm. is crazy. Yeah. And once I met you, I was like, oh shit, this is my guy right here. He's, <laughs> he's just real, you know? But the thing is, is I Yeah, grew was that a worry a little bit? It was. Right? You like spent all this time and all this capital. Mm -hmm. Like what if I was... But you kind of warned him that I was I cool, was right? Yep. Yeah. 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 So you were a little bit more calm because yes. of that, right? Yes. That makes sense. But I gambled. I'm taking a loss. But at yep. the same time, dude, it's the a next fucking event, win. The next, bro. The next event, you're set. Yeah, bro. You're gonna be able to leverage this in perpetuity. Yep. You're gonna take a, a million screenshots of me wearing this fucking mm -hmm. T-shirt. Yeah. And fuck. I mean, it's, you've won. Yeah. And that's kind of what we're trying to do, Gary. Is like, just use this to propel us. Um, it, because we're already working on our second installment next year. Makes with a ton of sense. And by the way, whoever your big dog is. If she or he wants to talk to me on the phone of who you guys are, I'm thrilled mm -hmm. to do it. Thank you, brother. You're welcome. Uh, that's the fucking ultimate endorsement right 100%. there. 100%. Thank you so much. One um, minute. 
because my time's yeah, fucked up. But but up, I will be dog. like, yo, Tim Ferriss, motherfucker, do it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, dude. I love Tim, dude. Four hour work week, shout it out. Um, so then the the ball was just rolling, and then as um, these powers that be started riding with us, it just got started gaining steam. But the thing is, is this is kind of what we want you to talk about on stage too. Like, money is good here, but consumerism's fucked. They started handing. When we go on stage, I know we're doing this in the podcast, mm-hmm. but I want to ask you. There's 40 minutes of me. I'm up there for how long? You're up there for um, another 35 minutes after that. In what format? Q&A? 20 minute Q&A. Okay. And then, then we're going to present you with the Worthy Warrior Award. Why don't we do th- Why don't we do 35, 40, or like we'll figure it out, but I think you should come on and ask me the first two or three questions before we would open up because mm-hmm. like, I want to be honest with you like because I want this to be great for mm-hmm. you. I'm going to black out up there. Okay. So you're going to be like, yo, like shit on everybody and get them fucking focused mm-hmm. on something mm-hmm. and I'm going to like say one thing and go down a path and you'll be like, how the, f-? basically here's how it works. Mm-hmm. People are like, Gary, go out there and say yellow banana. I'm like, cool. And I go out there and basically talk about chocolate kangaroos the whole time. <laughs> and they're like, yo, what happened? I'm like, yo, I told you. So <laughs> I'm going to go out there and try to bring the most value. Yeah. But I think you can definitely come in and be like, hey, let's bring this down to earth about us and ask three questions, okay. and then I'll give answers. I think you'll get what you need. Does that make sense? As we go on? After we go, after, like I think when I stop my keynote, uh-huh. I'm gonna transition to Q&A. Okay. I'm, you should come out and like do the first two or three questions. Gotcha, brother. Gotcha. Fair? Absolutely. I think it'll be a good look for you. Good. Got it? And then this way, because I'm gonna talk macro to bring value. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then you come in and be like, yo, why don't we bring this down to earth? I got mm-hmm. a couple questions about town. You see where I'm going? Yeah, absolutely. Good. That's a good look. Good. Now, um, to talk about kind of what drove me to bring you here. Yes. Um, it was really, I grew up slanging uh, baseball cards. Yeah. Or uh, basketball cards. Yeah. It was my, it was my uh, repertoire. And I was, you know. Garnets and Marbury. Garnets. I was obsessed with Garnet and Marbury. Kobe Bryant rookie cards. You yep. know what I'm saying? I was obsessed with Shaquille O'Neal. Yep. And then it turned into learning the power of trade value, mm-hmm. you know? And then um, I was also slanging newspapers. Shout out to newspapers. <laughs> yep. You know, back when print was hot. <laughs> um, back in the 90s. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Print. He used to work come, for Post Give me Bolton. that metal thing. I gotta drill some metal in back my back. It's my new thing. Keep going. At a boy, dude. I'm like fixing my back. Rolfing the like, fuck out like of himself it. right now. <laughs> so then it was just like, bro, early 2000s hit, and um, I grew up in a family of small business owners. But it was yep. like I was never handed anything. It's like, no motherfucker, you're coming to wash dishes and bust tables That's for right. no fifty dollars a night. Yep. You know, just yep. for shits and gigs. Yep. And then I would um just turn that into a hustle, you know. So like I started um. I started, once I started working on my own, um, every winter, say I'd get laid off because we get harsh winters here. I'm slanging, sewing purses for hippie chicks, one for 50, two for 80, they get to pick out the fabric and beads, you know? And it was just like the steady grind of like, and I never knew who Gary Vaynerchuk was. Mm -hmm. And then once I started learning about you, probably a year and a half, two years ago. And how did that happen? Instagram? Um, It was internet scrolling, scrolling on some timeline. And it was like, this motherfucker speaking my language. And it's the language, it's beyond your New York state of mind. It's like, he's on my wavelength, or I'm on his wavelength, and I'm definitely, um, obviously, a decade behind mm-hmm. him. But at Are the you 32? S- I'm 30. 30, yeah. amazing. So I'm behind him, but at the same time, you, I was like... When did you turn 30? Uh, in February 3rd. So did you feel anything turning 30 or no? Um, I actually, it was, uh, yeah, of course I did. Of course I did. But I got a baby on the way. So it's like, I'm growing up regardless. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I got married last year Mm -hmm. and I'm growing up regardless. And I knew when I was 30, I better have my purpose dialed in. That's what I was worried about is Mm -hmm. I got to have my purpose dialed in. And my purpose in this life is connecting people. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And and having, having conversations and it all comes from just the confidence. People ask me, dude, how did you get Gary Vaynerchuk? confidence yeah that's all it was you decided and then you work backwards mm-hmm. and you need sometimes you listen some you need things to work out sometimes yeah you know like N- nadler for whatever reason was cool with giving you like a discount on mm-hmm. on deposits which is something that's like pretty hard like i trust him so mm-hmm. he can do whatever the fuck he wants yeah. but he knows like we don't do it mm-hmm. and then like kathleen gave you kathleen what's that her name yeah, uh, kathleen she, harrington she yep. gave you the shot yep. she could have said no uh-huh I mean, just, I believe in that shit. If you, have a, if you understand what you're trying to do, it gives you a North Star and then you try to figure it out. I don't, I don't know what else to say. Like, it's just a lot better. And, and money can't be the North Star. Mm-hmm. It just can't. Every single day when I'm going on live, yes. I'm talking about how lucky I am, how lucky we are um, to just be in the position we're in. 
Was there ever a point, Gary, where you look back and it was like, man, I'm so lucky to have the mom I had, yeah. um, the dad I had, or the, the setup I had where I got to help build my dad's business? I think, I think, like, in that way, like, literally doing that, probably, probably, 42, probably seven, eight, nine years ago. But I lived my life as if my whole life. Mm-hmm. I always lived grateful. I just never thought of it that way. Mm-hmm. I always lived thankful, grateful, appreciative, lack of entitlement uh, my whole life. But I didn't think about it. I wasn't psychoanalyzing myself. Mm-hmm. When people started paying attention to me after I wrote some books and gave some speeches, it made me ask why. Mm-hmm. Like, why was I good on stage? Why did people like me? Like, why was this happening? Why did people hate me? Why did people not like me right away? Like, why were these things happening? And that's when I stumbled probably, you know, seven to 10 years ago. And like, oh boy, am I grateful for mm-hmm. my circumstance. Mm-hmm. You know, you start understanding, you know, a lot of people talk about white privilege or American privilege, male privilege. I think it's a mental health game. Mm-hmm. I'm just privileged to have my shit together mentally. Yeah. Like, self esteem, self awareness gratitude, these things really added up to a a good concoction that has really worked for me. That train of thought is a gift. There are so many people, that that way of thought is a gift. There are so many people who will go their entire life and not even know what the hell empathy is. 100%. You know? um, Not even know the word. Yes. Some people That's one of the biggest reasons I'm pushing it so hard. You know, just by even people acknowledging a word like empathy or gratitude. I mean, dudes that were trying to kill it didn't use words like empathy and gratitude seven years ago. Mm. <laughs> like, like just like seeing like sleeved up like rad dudes roll up to me like, "Yo, kindness, dog." I'm like, <laughs> it's just so. And honestly, I genuinely believe my great legacy potentially may be that I made emotionally intelligent, soft skills alpha. Mm. You know, you, you'll never believe this. This is super interesting to me. The fact that pink was a boy's color and blue was a girl's color back in the day is kind of how I think about gratitude, empathy, kindness. I'm like, I'm gonna trick these young fucking dogs into like thinking this shit is cool. And then one day in 50 years, people are gonna be like, the alpha male traits are like gratitude and kindness. And if I could pull that off, then it's like, then you can like, I think a lot about my legacy and I actually think that is probably the best bet I have right now. I can penetrate young alpha males. Most people that can penetrate young alpha males talk about cliche young alpha male shit and it's very like bang chicks, like win, like that stuff. Um, And I can get, I, I, I don't know, honestly, it's a very interesting thing to watch even for me to watch it outside of my own self. I'm like, am I really making gratitude cool <laughs> like it's 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 an incredible feeling right now for me it's a it's a combination of honing my skills understanding instagram and youtube at its apex believing in it you know i think one thing i always was was very sensitive i cried a lot as a kid i always stood up for kids that got bullied to my detriment in popularity i uh I like I'm very emotional. Like mm-hmm. I had this like big date in high school to Lion King and cried when the fucking dad died right in front of the girl. Like I've got that in me and like never really gave a fuck and like just and it and it's really working out. Like it's really fun for my high school and junior high friends, grammar school even to that degree friends. Like give me daps. Um it's been really interesting. It's been really interesting to see them come out of the woodworks and like defend me. Yeah. Even like people I didn't know super well. Like just like jump in and be like, no dude, like don't be a dick. Like I knew him in junior high and he fucking like was nice. <laughs> you know, it's just, it just really, it's been really very cool to watch actually. Do you believe in the Zodiac calendar? I don't. Now I'll tell you this, maybe, mm-hmm. I just actually don't know. Like mm-hmm. I don't, are we talking like Scorpio? Yeah, Scorp- Yeah, so like I'm a Scorpio and like I, I, feel like I've got Scorpio, first of all, I don't know what Scorpio things are, but like Mm -hmm. the whole stinging and like, like, you know, like, I don't know, like probably there's gotta be some fun truth to it. I'm just not educated enough to know if I do or I don't, and I don't gravitate gravitate towards figuring it out. Well, it's okay, so as we enter the Aquarian age, that's feminine energy, and what you have done with the female brand, as well as 
how you're pushing empathy. You're pushing feminine energy on the planet right now, and well, it's, it's really well, positive. You know, it's funny. I used to say that, and now I'm asking myself, is empathy and all these things actually feminine, or did we kind of position them that way? And I feel like that's where I've landed, which is they're neutral energies in my mind, though I might be wrong because I'm not educated on this. is not what I really look at. But I will say this. Something's definitely happening mm-hmm. for real, and it's fucking amazing. And it makes me feel incredible. And if, God forbid, I even pull off 10% of what I think I could pull off, mm-hmm. I'm making so much positive impact in the world. A woman up here said that she was laid off from QVC. Did you capture it? Did you see the w- woman? Got you got it? it? Mm-hmm. That, like You saw where I got caught a little bit? Yeah, yeah, she, yeah good. Can you give it to me? Because it's a real nice moment. She was like, look, I got laid off and I was like sitting on my couch depressed for two, three months and that fuck Monday, like fuck, like, like you know, make Monday your bitch. She was like, that changed my life. Yep. She just got, like, and that's crazy. Like, I don't know what else to say. Like, like, I don't need anybody ever on earth again to say anything nice. Just that woman today, here, in Russia, here, that minute, worth the whole fucking time. You're changing somebody's life. So anyway, I'm, I'm feeling great about things right now. I really am, and I feel like I'm just starting. I call you, I've been telling everybody, Gary Vaynerchuk, Vaynerchuk is the Nostra... I know, it's feel, it really feels... Like, I know sorry, you put the dog. D in there, I know, all the time. No, Gary Vaynerchuk is no, the know, Nostradamus you, of trends. <laughs> Do you feel that way? I don't, because I think Nostradamus, first of all, I actually want to be Nostradamus because he did really cool shit. Like, if I was Nostradamus, here's what I would say. In 2097, <laughs> the red-headed will do the thing. <laughs> and then and then what we do in 2097 is like, oh, the mountain exploded, it's a volcano. That's what he meant by red head. Like, so he was so general that we like, now some of this shit is not, you know what's funny? I got super freaking into Nostradamus in fifth and sixth grade. Like, I didn't care about school at all. But one day, like on a rainy day, they like brought in the fucking TV with the VHS and they played Nostradamus. And I was like, "Who the f- what the fuck? This is amazing. I got really into it. I don't think I'm that. Here's what I do think I am. I, so the reason I interrupt people so much when I interview on my podcast is because my brain goes too fast. Mm-hmm. Like, I know what's happening. I know what's, like, I have a sixth sense. Like, I know what you're about to say. Or uh, you say one word and I already know your sentence. So I'm like, let's get to the next shit. But the audience is like, yo, fuck face, what was he gonna say? <laughs> So what I think I'm very good at is, is seeing trends very quickly and acting on them. They've happened, but for some reason, nobody's seeing it. Mm-hmm. And I am, and I'm acting on it and speaking to it. And so it feels like it. I just think that I'm able to decipher big data and social things a little bit quicker than most. Okay, so uh, you were on Joe Rogan's podcast. You I were was? interrupting the shit out of was him. Was I? You were, and I was, and like, that was his show. Yeah, and I was like, "Damn, what's up with Gary Bear? <laughs> this dude is just interrupting the king of conversation." And then I look back, I'm like, "Damn, dude, Gary was on to something." Now, do you still have a relationship with some of the top podcasters in oh, yeah. Los Angeles? And do you ever um, try to make it make your way back on the circuit, or are you just too busy? I'm too busy. Like yeah. Joe, I really want to do that show. He's got the best show. Mm-hmm. He's killing it. Um, we, we, we DM each other once in a while with some love. Um, what was I, what did you see that I was on to? Well, I just knew that this guy um, knows, he is so confident, because this is actually probably the first six months I even knew who the hell Gary V was. And you So were, it was cool that I was right about McGregor and Mayweather. Well, that was cool as shit. Yeah. Um, because you- like, That'll be fun like nine <laughs> years from now when somebody <laughs> listens to it and be like, oh shit, it's fun now, but- you're just so tapped in, and, and there's a difference between being right and being narcissistic. You know, I'm sure you... I, I only talk about shit I know. Mm-hmm. Like, if you were like, hey, you want to talk about this apricot you're eating right now, or a peach, whatever the fuck I'm eating? I'd be like, sure. And you'd be like, talk about it. I'd be like, it's delicious. You're like, you know the pit comes from the apple. I'd be like, I'd, you would just hear me quiet because I have nothing else to say. I think the thing that is happening with me is I'm talking about and I'm being interviewed by people talking about the shit that I know Mm -hmm. that I'm gonna be on tilt. But if you want to talk about poker right now, you'd be stunned how quiet I'd be. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to play it. I mean, I know how to play it, but not like all you fuckers that grew up on the internet and really know how to play. You know, like I, I am actually, where I think I'm my most fun to watch because it's not my normal self is couples dinners where 
I'm like, a, you know, where I want to be socially, like a good like partner in crime to the six couples. So I'll, on purpose, if Caleb and a significant other, and my wife and I went out, I'd be like, talk to a significant other, be like, what do you do? And if she's a lawyer, he's a lawyer. I don't know. <laughs> like, you know, you know that I'll listen for 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. And I think that, yeah, I mean, I think on Rogan or anything else, if I know what I'm talking about, like I was cutting him off because he was wrong that he said the McGregor and Wayne Mayweather fight wouldn't happen. I said it would, and so I get excited. I was right. Where were you at when you definitely bought that fight? Yeah, I bought that fight. Um, I was in the Hamptons because uh, it was summer, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. August last year. Mm-hmm. You were in the Hamptons? Eight or nine guys. I was at my home. And um, it was fun. Actually, it was first four, three, four rounds got us a little mm-hmm. going, right? Mm-hmm. It was a lot of fun. I was, I was very neutral, which was weird. I don't, I'm not usually neutral. It makes sense those two fuckers made me neutral. Like I was kind of like whatever. I was like, in a lot of ways, like love, hate with both of them. I don't really know either one of them, um, but uh, I have a lot of empathy and like curiosities around both of them because they're unique dudes, uh, and so it was fun to watch. Personality-wise, would you consider yourself the Mayweather McGregor of business? Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, I, I can't kind of get away from that. It's Gary, weird. It's you're McGregor of business, dog. You're br- you're just McGregor has branded himself and catapulted himself. Here's the thing to the likes we've never seen. Here's the thing. I think I'm more Drake, and I'll explain what I mean by that. Drake is self-deprecating and and deploys humility. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think I'm a little more Drakey, though. You know, I haven't looked enough. Mayweather doesn't do humility or self-deprecation, so I definitely know that. McGregor seems to have that in him. I just have a, right? It's a little bit, a little bit. So I think that makes a little more sense, but I think I'm much more, dra- like I'm, I'm really comfortable in my shortcomings mm-hmm. and I like them and I like talking about them because I think I'm the greatest of all time and I think I mean nothing. And I think that's balance, extreme balance, which is why I think I'm gonna have extreme results. I really think I can be the most heralded entrepreneur of this generation. I do not think I'll make more money or even kind of business impact than Zucks or Bezos or Elon Musk um, or many others, but I think I'm gonna touch the most entrepreneurs emotionally, create the Mm -hmm. most entrepreneurs, help the most entrepreneurs, uh, help the most people not do entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I think that's gonna be a big legacy. It makes sense when you when Drake's new album's named Scorpion. Yeah, is is he a Scorpio? I don't know. No, he's an October baby, right? But he did the humility and he called out what everyone was already saying about yeah. him. Yeah. Yes. I already know what everyone's saying. Yep. That's kind of like eight mile. Eminem eight mile. Yeah. Hundred percent. Right there. 100%. Me too. Like I always do that. Like, you know what's funny? I don't put myself in a lot of risky spots. Mm-hmm. The sneaker was fun yeah. because I put myself in a risky spot. Like that could have been a real fucking flop. <laughs> Like when I was sitting about that, I was like, I remember one flight, I was just like, dude, you're wearing a Scorpio hat. That's kind of cool. It's like, I feel like the whole. Damn, full circle yeah, type so, shit. The uh, universe is talking to um, us. <laughs> I remember one flight, and that was fun. I was like, okay, this could get ugly. Like, they may not sell any. They may be like in the dollar store closed out. Like, this could be stupid. I felt confident, but I knew I was going into that. That was a leap. That that was like, huh? And, uh, that made that exciting, but it felt so natural right to me, so I felt confident. Yeah. Have you ever just had a fateful instance where you're like, damn, something higher than myself is talking to me right now? I kind of feel like never and always. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know? Almost Not like you're I just could, flowing out. I could feel like there's so, like, look, here's what I would say. I take no, I am the byproduct of my parents and my environment. Mm-hmm. So I don't Think of myself, excuse me about the sneeze. <laughs> and it's a really good sneeze. If you're Russian, you know why I just got excited. <laughs> In the Russian superstition, when you sneeze when you're saying something, it means that it's very true. <laughs> it's so it's really interesting to me that I was just about to say, I don't get high on my own supply. I don't think I'm special, not because I don't think I'm special. I, I know I'm having special results. I just think that's the cosign to my parents and America and adversity, not me. Vayner Media, I get excited about. I mean, I'm, I did that. My kids one day, I'll be like, yo. But like me, that's my parents and, and 
the era I grew up in and like coming from nothing and circumstance. Mm-hmm. And so like when people are like you're when people are like you're Jesus, like you walk on water, I'm like, cool. I, I thank you, oh my God, but like cool. When people are like, you're a charlatan, you're full of shit, you're a snake oil salesman, I'm like, cool. Like it's it's just it's all quiet in my head. It's super quiet in my head. As promoters of Gary Vaynerchuk and disciples of Gary Vaynerchuk, so often throughout this process, Gary, I heard, I'm not gonna come to that. I can go on YouTube and already hear. Mm. And I know mm-hmm. you, I know you talk about this. Don't watch my shit. You don't need to if yeah. you're already doing it. But when people should come see live entertainment when it comes to, dude, you got to grab Tony Robbins live. That's when you get the goods, whether he's saying the same shit or not. What do you say to people like that? I think that's a personal thing. Mm -hmm. Like I have a lot of empathy of like how you're thinking about event marketing and things of that nature, but the truth is go to people who want it. Yeah. I would tell you don't sell to the unsellable. Mm -hmm. Like we don't need the clip here and be like, see Gary, like me saying come to live events, if that's not the kind of way you learn, Mm -hmm. look, the reason to come to a Gary V event is to network with the other fuckers in the place. Amen. Like you're you're around other people that are hungry and trying to win, do shit. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, there you go, man. Like, and to like, that's the ROI. Like after everybody pours out and goes to the streets of Rochester, or whatever Mm -hmm. the fuck you guys do around here, like, you know, like, like go fucking do shit. Like meet people, like people are gonna hang around and do stuff and like, you know, and then also the cool thing about that is like the Rolling Stones and like Aerosmith and like Billy Joel and the beat, like the Beatles performed a trillion times, but there is the Shea Stadium event. Mm -hmm. Like, like this could be the night that like I do say the thing or that like my whole legacy is known for. And then if I get cool and big one day, that's cool, right? Like the reason to go to a concert is like they may play a song a certain way or somebody mm-hmm. may come out and jam with somebody that they've never jammed with before, right? Like, or Jerry Garcia will just show up from the dead. I don't know, like something will happen. And I think that, you know, to me, if I loved keynotes and business or me, the reason I would come out is, is, you know, there was a time where I said, what's the ROI of your mother? Or stop watching fucking Lost. And if you're a hardcore me fan and you were there the time it was dropped, that's cool. The same way I would go to a wrestling match, I know Macho Man is gonna beat, you know, George the Animal Steel every time, mm-hmm. but it might be the night that he th- brings out his new flying elbow version. Mm-hmm. And so what's a cool about live is you actually don't know. Mm-hmm. That's why like, we've done. Like you don't. This could be the night somebody comes to run up and like, tr- like hates me, and I knock them out with a right hook, and it's amazing, mm. and it's like, you know, like you just never know. And I think that's why you go live. He's so athletic. <laughs> yeah, so fucking. What a jab. <laughs> yeah. No, but that's kind of like when Prince died. Our icon, our um, yes. our lifeblood here in in the yes. land of 10K. When Prince died that weekend, if you went and saw live music that weekend. Bro, the Purple Rains will never be the same. Um, like Dave Matthews Band mm-hmm. over um, Super Bowl weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, just the homage they were playing. Or I saw Dave. Um, the do you week- love Dave Matthews? I do. I do. Who's the, your favorite? Um, what Artist, do you mean? Period. Artist growing Rap? up. Hip hop. Um, no, Rock? dude. I grew up on on. I love hip hop, but, but I grew up on Eminem, obviously. Yep. But I grew up on classic rock. I, I get dude, it. it was Pink Floyd. Yeah, Pink Floyd or bust. I get it. Um, but the weekend that Rick James died, uh-huh. that was arguably one of the best Dave Matthews Band concerts to be at because they played Super Freak and they made it extra funky, you know. And it's <laughs> it's moments like that where it's like that's why that's why live can always play, and. And even when it's not extra funky, if you love fucking Dave Matthews, but not really, and let me explain what I mean by this. Mm-hmm. If you love Dave Matthews in this version, which is you see Dave Matthews band three or four times in your life, you wanna hear Satellite. You know, cause you're a fake Dave Matthews fan. If you're a real Dave Matthews fan, you wanna see what, I'm not, my wife is ironically, you wanna hear some other fucking real shit, like some nerd shit, right? Yeah. Same when I go out there right now. There's gonna be fans, mm-hmm. well there's not as many as Dave Matthews, but 100 people that are hardcore fans, mm-hmm. that 80 of them are hardcore, quote unquote, they just wanna hear me curse. Mm-hmm. They just think that's awesome. The ones that are really hardcore, like is he gonna go more into the parenting thing tonight? Is he gonna go social media? Like they know, they know that like, you know, and so I think that's cool. Like I, I went years spending the first 10 minutes of my keynote talking about Russia, baseball cards, lemonade stands. I don't do that anymore. Not because I think I've made it, but I think enough of a percentage of the audience has heard it on YouTube that I want to bring them value. That's why I only want to do Q and A. 
I just want to, q and is amazing because mm-hmm. I'm giving all sorts of shit that yeah. I never give. You can put me in Q&A, I can bring up new content in perpetuity. It wouldn't be a stationary astronaut podcast, Gary, if I didn't ask you this one How many question. episodes have there been of the stationary astronaut? You are episode 104. Good for you, man. What was episode one? Um, episode one was just me and my uh, two co-hosts at the time. Um, episode. Who was the biggest guest you had before me? Oh shit! Um, I had James Arthur Ray, co-writer of The Secret. Yep. Um, episode ninety-nine. What's he say about The Secret? Because I think these secrets scares. I've never read it, so uh, I want to shit on it, dude. But this notion of like, think it and will happen scares me because I think some people think like lay on this couch right here, think it and will happen. It got culty. It got very yeah. culty. Does he admit to that, or is he, or is he in? Yeah, a- yeah, he does. He actually because he went through uh, some tribulation, dog. Did he? Um, yeah, where he was running a retreat and a few people died oh, under his right, watch. Right, right in the heat thing. Yeah, in the Fuck. in the heat sweat lodge. Yeah, so we got. Is that him. the dude that got like beef with Oprah? That was all weird, or is that yeah, a different dude? dude? Yeah. Yep, yep, yeah. It got so, crazy. So I got into that, and I was I was hammering, and that was my first ever phone call interview um, on uh, on the podcast, and it got crazy, man. So I was asking him, "Will you ever put?" sweat lodges again not no i can't do it you know so it got why weird. is the sweat lodge good um it actually pushes your neurotransmitters in your brain yeah, and see, it pushes is, you your... know what's the best part for me is i failed everything in science mm-hmm. like i'll never do like shit like that only because like i don't even i don't wouldn't know you know what i mean like when i hear that i'm like what's a fucking neurotrans like i'm like i'm out have you ever taken a psychedelic no i've never fucking smoked a cigarette really that's the best shit about me. Yeah. That for me, that makes me and my family and like dear friends laugh. My college friends, whose entire four year mission was to get me to take one puff of a blunt and couldn't pull it off, when they see people leave comments in my YouTubes of like cokehead, they like sometimes screenshot it and they send it to me. They're like, this is such funny shit. You're so fucking the worst. We couldn't get you to fucking take one hit of one blunt. Fucking, if these people knew that you do nothing, like you don't even drink Red Bull, they're like, they wouldn't fucking believe any of us. We just laugh about it. Damn. Dude, yeah, man. So you're the real deal. No, I don't think I'm the real deal. As a matter of fact, with Aubrey and Ferris and all these fuckers, mm-hmm. I'm like, I think they're right. Yeah. Like, I think taking some weird fucking like grassy, like root, like a banana peel from the fucking Amazon and it sends you into another dimension is like smart. Yeah. I just don't want to do it. Like, but I think it, like, I'm very, like, into it, actually. Like, theoretically, like, you know how else I feel about that? Steroids. I think people should do steroids. Mm -hmm. Like, I actually, like, kind of logically, now, let me preface this, because it's all on the record. I'm not educated at all, but there's something that feels intuitively right to me that, like, the 45-year-old average male may just want to take steroids. I think Mm -hmm. that's a good idea. I'm desperately hoping that self-awareness and self-esteem get mapped as a chemical and everybody can just inject the fuck out of it. Mm-hmm. If we can inject the fuck out of self-esteem into every person on earth, everything would be fine. Yeah. You wouldn't be mad at fucking anybody. Yeah. If you had full self-esteem, you'd be mad at no one. Nobody who's brown, nobody who's black, nobody who's a woman, nobody who's a white male, nobody who's in Alabama, in New York, LA, conservative, liberal. Like We'd all be chill. If everyone was like me, I love everybody. Unless you're a dick, then I hate you. And that's what self-esteem is, and fucking, that's the fucking drug. Fuck a mushroom that makes you wanna have sex longer. Like, let's get some fucking self-esteem going here. If I fucking stick a self-esteem up your ass, you'll fucking dominate life. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that was so funny. <laughs> oh, shit. I mean, that's fucking what's up. Like, let's start talking about self-esteem. That's the fucking drug I'm on. Like, Ritalin, Coke, crack, like all this speed, like what people think I'm on, that shit doesn't do anything. That's fucking short-term. I'm long-term. Yeah. You want long-term? It's self-esteem and empathy. Be kind and like have compassion and also fucking have compassion for yourself and be like, know that you're a winner. Like, find your shit. Like, don't listen to fucking the people that shit on you like get in your own head put positivity around you drop loser friends like don't hang out with losers if your mom's a loser get the fuck out of there if your buddy from around the way like I believe in loyalty the most I'm a fucking guy more than anybody but guess what if your buddy's a fucking loser and just thinks the government and society like you gotta have to drop them you have to hang out with them once a year not a freaking fucking day and like let's start having mental talk boom and that's what we're doing tonight yes thank you for coming Gary thank you Welcome to the Stationary Astronauts, Thank you, my man. Thanks for having me. (laughs) S.A. All right, S.A., baby, you're going on stage in literally two minutes. Well, I'm primed.